Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to be in adult Sunday school class this morning. Um, we were here last week filling in for Brother Thomas, and the mantle has fallen again, so you, I'm back. And um, thank you. Um, we are honored and privileged to stand before you and teach again today. And I believe the Lord is keeping us in the same vein of the Spirit. I believe He is getting us focused on prayer. And today will be part two of where I started last week on prayer. And I want to talk to you today about prayer and the voice of God. Because those are inseparable. You can't hear the voice of God without prayer. You can't know the voice of God without prayer. Um, so with that continuing focus on prayer, I heard someone say last week, I'm praying against this heat. It's hot enough. This 100 degree heat, I can't get in my garden. Everything's getting burned. The farmers need rain. It's just too hot. How many of you can say amen? Well, somebody's prayers are getting answered because this next week, the highs are only supposed to be in the upper 80s. So somebody's prayers got answered about this heat. So I'll just tell you, turn your prayers on the gas price now. If you got the heat down, maybe we can get the fuel price down. And I say that in jest, but... There are more important things than even the gas price, Sister Kane, that we need to pray about. Um, so if you have your Bibles today, I will turn to one scripture. Not a lot of scriptures today. Um, we're going to talk about prayer and the voice of God. I see Brother Thomas in here. Praise God. Reading from the Amplified Deuteronomy 28 and 1. Very powerful prophetic scripture. Now it shall be if you diligently listen to and obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all of His commandments, which I am commanding you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Now this was given to an earthly people, the children of Israel, but we're a spiritual seed of Abraham. So this prophetic scripture which is always conditional prophecy is always conditional and there's a big word in there it's a two letter word if you diligently listen to and obey the voice of the Lord no doubt there are those that are older than I am in here and those that are even younger have heard the voice of God speak to you and you obeyed that voice and you saw the blessings of God come into your life and you saw the blessings of God realized through your obedience to the Word of God. If you repented, if you were baptized in water in Jesus' name and then filled with the Holy Ghost, that was your obedience to the Word of God. So we are going to talk today about prayer and the voice of God and obeying the voice of God. I'm going to go back and just recap a little bit of where we were last week. We talked about prayer and communication with God while we pray. We pray to renew strength. When we pray, we pray early. We pray all night. We pray always. We pray without ceasing. Where do we pray? We pray in solitary places. Your closet. Last night I spent time in my man cave. It's where I got all the deer heads, all the fish, all the ducks, all the game that we've had mounted. It's my little office. It's too hot to go in the shop. I told you I like praying in the shop. It was just too hot to be out there in the shop last night without any AC. So I went into my man cave and I sat there. I began to pray and I began to seek the face of God. Prayer in a solitary place where you can get the clutter and the noise out. A lot of clutter, a lot of noise, a lot of voices. But to hear the voice of God, very important. Very important. 
We talked about different types of prayer last week. Supplication, intercession, petition, prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of groaning and travail. Sometimes we pray fervently. It should always be done honestly, boldly, and positively. Sometimes we pray quietly. Other times it's very loud with a sense of urgency and travail. I don't know about you today, but I have a sense of urgency in my spirit today. We need to pray like we've never prayed before. We need to seek the voice of God and the face of God and to hear Him give us direction. How many of you know salvation is a process? It's a process. Started for me when I was nine years old. 57 now. Wow. And I still need direction from God. I still need correction from God. I still need instruction from God. How many of you feel the same way? Are all your prayers answered? Mine aren't. Do you have perfect direction and perfect knowledge of the perfect will of God for your life right now? Those are tough things to figure out. As we navigate life and life and its challenges, knowing the voice of God and which way to turn and having wisdom to make decisions in life. Do I go to college? Do I take this career path? Do I change careers? Where do I allow my children to go to school? What friends do I allow my children to have? Do I homeschool or let them go to regular school? These are decisions that we have to make as adults. There are other financial decisions. Boy, do you want a mortgage now with interest rates jumping up? Do you build right now or not to build right now? Things are more expensive. God, help us to have that communication with God. To know that these sometimes things that seem trivial to us are lifetime decisions that we make. And that we hear the voice of God. And He gives us the proper direction of which way to go. I want God to speak to me. I want to know His voice. I want to do the things that please Him. It is said prayer cannot be taught. It can only be caught. I wish today, oh, my prayer today, is that everyone in this room will leave with a sense of urgency and catch it in your spirit. I will pray more like I have never prayed before. And I will strive to keep His commandments and obey His voice. And the scripture said, that comes with elevation and promotion and God will bring you to a high place if you hear his commandments and you obey his voice a blessed place not a cursed place so everything is conditional if I obey if I hear if I walk with him I do his will I keep his commandments I'm in a high place if I don't do those things then just the opposite can happen and we can easily look back and say, I made a bad decision here and I find myself in a low place. I find myself in a valley. I find myself in a trial. I find myself in a place of correction. God says, okay, if you're going to do that, then the blessing won't be there and it will turn to the flip side. And I won't be brought to a high place. But I believe we as a people, corporately, if we are a prayerful people, God will lift us high. God will lift the church out of the, the mire of this world and make us high above all the nations of the earth. Praise God. Prayer is to be done earnestly and sincerely and not with vain repetition. It's open, honest communication with a heartfelt desire to change. If you approach God with a... With your list, 
And I have a list. Do you have a list? <laughs> Do you have a list today? What you're praying about? But if you approach him with the mindset, I'm not going to let this, this prayer time be two-way communication. It's just going to be my list and God not giving his list to me of what he would like me to do or what he would like to see out of me and I just give him all my petitions and all my requests and I never listen to what he's saying to me or telling me to do then I'm basically telling God I don't want to change and in my flesh I'm a creature of habit right how many of you brush your teeth at the same time in the morning how many of you hit the cure egg at the same time in the morning how many of you take your Prevacid at the same time in the morning? That was supposed to be funny. We all do that. We get our prescription. We take our blood pressure medicine at the same time. We take, we take our Lipitor at the same time. Some of us have those little pill bottles laid out, right? I take my 14 vitamins. Who knows what my wife gives me in that packet? There's vitamin D in there. There's vitamin C in there. We've we got to worry about COVID. We've got to worry about all this stuff. So we, i got this packet of vitamins, right? But it's a habit. We're creatures of habit. And we do those routine things all the time. But some of those things can clutter the mind like my dirty garage. Right? And every now and then, the clutter gets so bad, I'm going straight to the dumpster with some of it. My wife and my son will say, where is, where's that? And I'm just over there. Where's a... Uh... Dad took it to the dumpster. Dad put it out by the trash. Dad threw it away. I've heard my son say, but Dad threw it away, Mom, because I don't like clutter right so every now and then you just open the shop door you open the garage you open the closet and you just throw it out if you haven't used it in two or three years you're probably never going to use it but there might be that one time that I need that tool or I need that so I build all this clutter up isn't that the way it is in our minds and our spirits we leave that one time thing in there Oh, I remember that one time I was hurt. Or that one time somebody said something. Or that one time that person ignored me. Or that one time they didn't shake my hand. Or that one time they sat in my seat. That was my seat. And we get all this clutter and all this stuff. Or I didn't get to sing that special. Or I didn't get to teach. Or I didn't get to preach that day. Or I wasn't called to lead that. I, I wasn't given the opportunity to do that. And we let all that stuff get in our spirit. Man, we let all that stuff clutter us up, and it just bogs us down, right? We get so busy with maybe serving, just doing our duty. We get so busy coming to church. We've got a routine. We've got a rut. We've got a ritual. I want my hairbrush right here. I want my toothbrush right here. My scope's right here. My mouthwash is right here. Don't. I remember me and my wife got married. She put her toothbrush in my cup. And I was like, oh, boy. She put her toothbrush in my toothbrush cup. Her mindset. It was a big challenge. Things were changing very rapidly here. I always had my toothbrush in my cup. But that's how we are. We let all this stuff clutter our minds and our lives. And that junk gets in there and it keeps our prayers from being fruitful. Because when I kneel down to pray, my mind is a million miles from communicating with God. Right? If I, if I go to prayer today, this morning, I tried, you know what? Monday's calendar is right there in Google. And you got to hit that calendar and you scroll through that calendar. And in my Google calendar, I can almost tell you line by line everything I have in that Google calendar telling me what's got to be accomplished tomorrow. 
what insurance company I've got to contact, what attorney I may have to talk to, what patient I may have to schedule. I'm getting real with you now. This is life. This is where we're at. This clutter, this stuff. And it has to be. What's got to be repaired? What's got to be fixed? Oil's got to be changed in this car. The, the, the um, tire's got to be rotated on this one. This one's 40 hours past due. Brother Kane turned on my tractor and the valves clattered and the oil. I, oh my goodness. It was supposed to be changed at 200 hours. I got 240 hours on this tractor. The valves are clattering because you didn't change the oil. You overlooked it. All this stuff. So now I got to go to Divinity and I got to get the oil. And I got to get the oil to change. And I got, I got to run here and I got, man, I got to change the oil in this tractor. I'll tear my tractor up. Preventative maintenance. Anybody know what that is? Got to prevent something from happening in the tractor. Got to take care of the tractor, Brother James. Got to get the oil changed. Got to get the filter changed. Got to change the transmission fluid. Got to do all this clutter, this stuff. What about the preventative maintenance to the soul? What about the preventative maintenance God wants to do in our minds and our spirits? Oh God, help us to hear His voice. Oh God, help us to long to get the clutter out and to be in a peaceful place with Him. When we get the clutter out and we hear his voice and we talk with him, it's a peaceful place. It's a calm place. It's one of the very few times all that stuff really doesn't matter when I get in the presence of the Lord. Because I want my prayers to be fruitful. So we should boldly approach the throne of grace with expectation that our communication will be fruitful. And that my prayers will have impact on me personally and on the lives of others. How many of you have prayed for others, people in your family, and seen God perform the miraculous in their life? My mom was an intercessor. If you're here today, it's probably because somebody, somewhere, a friend, a family member, pastor, somebody was an intercessor in your family and prayed that you would be saved today. Hallelujah. My mom was an intercessor and she still is. I remember as a kid, James, I remember as a kid, she'd go in that back bedroom and she would close that door and I would hear her start praying. She would pray for my dad. And then she would pray for her two boys. And she would bombard heaven with those prayers. I remember I was just getting started in college and ministry and um, my little brother was backslidden. And um, my heart goes out to prodigals. We need them to come home. It's going to take our prayers to bring them back. It's going to take our love and the love of God to receive them. But he had gotten into heavy metal music. Now, that seems so lame today compared to what people are into today. But he was into heavy. He was getting into Ozzy Osbourne. Anybody know who that is? He was listening to Ozzy. And he was getting into heavy metal music. Started drinking. Really got pretty far out there. And I would hear my mom praying for him, you know, going to concerts, and that whole, that whole rock and roll, rock on, right? Reaching for him. And I could hear my mom praying for him day after day, week after week. And it seemed like heaven was silent, but she kept knocking. She kept seeking. Ask, seek, and knock. Sometimes you can just ask for something. Somebody will hand it to you. Then other times you've got to search. Other times you have to be more fervent in your request. You have to knock. So I joined in with her in prayer, and we began to pray for him. We made a specific commitment. Another young man who's a minister today that was a good friend of mine, pastors of church today. 
um, Brother Myron Schilling, he was praying also with me, and we joined in for prayer. We linked together. Sometimes it's good to get a prayer partner and link together with that person and pray. It was late one night. I, man, it was a, probably a Friday or Saturday night. I'd gotten off from work. I'd worked till 11 o'clock that night in the grocery store where I worked. Um, and I got off from stocking shelves that night. Came home, laid down. And good old Winn-Dixie days of bagging groceries and buffing floors cleaning bathrooms. That was fun stuff. But I laid down, I was twitching. You know, when you get, you get so tired, you're, you're just, you're, you're going to sleep, you jerk, you're just like, oh! You're sleeping so hard. And a knock on the door came. And it was my little brother. And he was, he was drunk. He was drunk. He knocked on my door. And he sat down. I said, sit down here. We sat down on the doorstep. And he said, my life's a wreck. He began to cry. He began to weep. He said, I want to be like you, Richard. I said, no, no. He said, you don't want to be like me. He said, you want to be like Jesus Christ. I said, you want to be like the Lord. I'm not your pattern, bud. I'm your older brother, but I'm not your pattern. He's the pattern. And he said, well, you, you got seem like everything's going good. You got your wife and you're married. You and Deborah just got married and everything's... He goes, I want the same thing. I said, you can have that if you'll give your heart to God. If you'll just listen to the voice... He's talking to you every day. I said, we've been praying for you every day. You can't tell me God's not talking to you. Too much prayer. I promise you, if you pray like that, heaven will move on your behalf. I put my arm around him. I just grabbed him by his head. and I just, I just pulled him up real close. I said, I love you. But I love you. But you got to give yourself to God. You got to give all this to God. That weekend, he found his way to an altar. That weekend, he repented. God filled him with the Holy Ghost again. His life never turned around from that day. He was just an 18 year old kid trying to figure out life, trying to figure out that direction. I saw God give him a wife, give him three beautiful children, three beautiful grandchildren. I saw him go to work in ministry. When we went down for the funeral, when he passed away, um, I never knew he had done so much for God. A girl said, when I was on the street, my life was wrecked with drugs. Said, your brother put me in an apartment, paid for the apartment till I got off of drugs. And I'm who I am today because of your brother. No, she's saved because a mom prayed. She's saved because a brother grabbed a hold of the horns of the altar and reached and heard the voice of God. If we humble ourselves and pray, God will heal our land. Wow. How many of you are thankful for the Supreme Court rulings this week? We ought to thank God today. Finally, the unborn in our country get some protection. Years and years of prayer, decades of prayer, countless prayers, Slow down this abortion atrocity. I believe, I firmly believe it has held back God's judgment on our country. At least it has slowed the hand of judgment for the things that are committed in our world. 
Sometimes it takes years. Like water in a river cutting through the rocks. Like the Snake River cutting through canyon of rock. Prayers cut through the evil in our world. And it wears down. It wears down the evil that we see every day. Thank God our prayers never die. Revelation 5 and 8. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Your prayers, Sister Sheila, never die. Never die. Innumerable prayers have been stored throughout all generations from those that have earnestly contended for the faith and for this end time generation. Can I tell you, your prayers have enormous value, enormous power, and your prayers change things. I will bombard heaven daily and cut through the evil of this world until we see ultimate victory. Just because it has not been answered does not mean you give up and quit. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. You will see results. Prayers go up as a memorial before God. And I do believe they will usher in the end time harvest, the rapture of the church, and God's judgment on the world. There's scripture for this. And I think we should pray even more for a further moral awakening in our country. Let there be an awakening in our world today. Don't think it's over. It's not over, my friend. So I am thankful again that the unborn found some protection this week. Let's just lift our hands and thank God for that. Thank God. Deuteronomy 28 and 2. <clears throat> and these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you pay attention to the voice of the Lord your God. I've heard my daddy say, boy, you better pay attention. Right, Brother Cain? You better pay attention. You're going to be dumb. You better be tough. You can get hurt doing that. He told my little brother, had a big track hoe out there, and he said, stay away from that track hoe. He was a little kid and had those big ramps, you know, those big ramps. Told my little brother, you know, he, he was one not to listen a lot. He said, Russell, don't get out there. And he wanted to be around that track hoe, you know, they were working on something, digging out in the back of the house there. and I heard, bam! Ah! I heard a scream. I go out there, and he had pulled that ramp down, pow, right on his hip, cracked his hip, pinned him to the ground, because he didn't listen. He didn't pay attention. So we're carrying him to the emergency room, getting the x-rays. Well, God says... I have blessings for you that will overcome and overtake you if you just pay attention. Wow, that's common sense 101. To just pay attention. How many of us want the blessings of God overtake me? Even when I'm dumb, I make the wrong decision. Come overtake me. Pay attention to the voice of the Lord. And obey. How are you going to hear his voice if you're not praying? If you're not listening. If you're not communicating. I'm a talker and I talk too much. It's the truth. I've, I'm working on that. 57 years. I get to talking. I get to talking. I just get going. Never meet a stranger. Talk about anything and everything. But you have to learn to listen too. I was talking to Brother Kerry this morning. And he was asking me, how's things going at work? How's this? How's this? How's life, ministry, and all this stuff and things? Sharing things. And I, I stopped in the middle of that of talking about me. 
I said, wait a minute. How's things going for you, bro? Just stop and listen. How's things in your life? Sometimes you may ask somebody that question, and you're like, oh, why did I ask that question? Because you may get your wagon loaded, but that's okay, right? We have so much stuff now, we don't want our wagons loaded, but we are to bear one another's burdens. And you may not need prayer right now. You, you may be on a mountain. It may be rocking and rolling for you. Everything is going good. Everything's perfect. Stick around long enough. You'll need somebody to talk to. You'll need somebody to come up and say, Hey, man, I got you back. I got you covered. I got you covered with prayer. Blessings will not overtake us if we're not reading his word. We're not listening to the voice of the Spirit. and We're not listening and communicating with Him. There has to be continual communication with the Master if you want that guidance in your life. Do you know hearing the voice of your Heavenly Father instills confidence? If you've got a word from God, as Bishop would say, I'll fight hell with a water pistol. Right? If you, get, if you have that confidence that, that, that you heard from him, God told you something. It instills faith. And if you hear the voice of God, it will give you boldness in life's most challenging situations. I prefer victory than defeat. Second place is really not on my radar. I want to win. We got out there the other day in the park. Ooh, playing at softball that day at the day in the park. Took me a week to get over it. I dove for one of those balls and I hit that hard clay and I was like, if you're going to be dumb, you got to be tough. Not, I identify as a 25-year-old, but my body says you're 57. Since you can identify for whatever you want to identify for today. But I like to win. And I, re I remembered back since we were, you know, here at Father's Day and I was thinking about Little League Baseball, and that's, that's important stuff, by the way. How many of you got kids and grandkids in Little League playing ball, soccer? That's communist, by the way. That was a joke. That communist sport of soccer. But Little League Baseball was important when I grew up, man. It was big. The whole city and the communities were on it. and they, they divided the town into four quadrants. And you were from northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast. I played for the Southwest Athletic Association. We wore black and gold uniforms. Seems like yesterday I was standing on that field hitting that hard ball. I had a kid that had a beard and he was like 12. Terror, man. The guy had a mustache. We're just a little kids. This guy had a beard and a mustache. And I'm like, oh, my Lord. And he threw the ball so hard. I mean, it was like a BB. Pow. And I was like, where did they get this alien from? But I, I, I went to that game that day. I remember this game. Playing for the city championship. Playing for first place. And um, my dad was not a big baseball fan. He loved football. He, he was there at every football game. He, he liked me to play football, but he, he wasn't into baseball too much. And I asked him, I said, are you going to be at the game today? He goes, I don't know. It's hot. He goes, I might come up there. He said, hit a home run. I said, well, I'll try, but we're facing, we're facing this pitcher. And I named his name, and he said, oh, boy. And... Um, Nobody could hit him. And um, you would know it would get down around the fifth or sixth inning of the game, two or three men on base, and who comes up to bat? Me and the bat shaking like this. Terror. And um, I just remember him saying, you can, you can hit a home run. You're going to hit a home run. And I'm standing there and, Man, strike one, pow. And I'm like, I'm going to lose the game. 
pow, strike two. And I'm swinging. I mean, I'm swinging. I mean, I'm going down swinging. I'm not going to stand there and just look at the ball. That's the way I am with life. I'm going down swinging. That's the way I am with church. I'm going down swinging. I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast. I'm going to seek God. I feel a preacher coming on here. I'm going to give it everything I got. I just want to hear his voice. And I did not know my dad was in the stands. So I step back. Coach calls me over there. Coach knows I'm going to strike out, right? He's like, come over here, Richard. You know, the little powwow. Man, you got to get your eye on the ball, get the bat back. You got to see it. You got to swing early. The guy's throwing 60 miles an hour. It's a short mound. It's like 90 because he's half grown at 12. And so I'm standing there, and all of a sudden in the stands, I hear this voice. It's the voice of my dad. So, Richard, you're going to hit a home run. And I looked up there, and there he was. Huh. My dad just said, I'm going to hit a home run. Something got in my spirit. There was a confidence. When I heard that voice, you're going to hit a home run. So, Dykes, I squared up. I got ready. And I said, I'm swinging late just went through what I knew to do a little bit of instruction to myself you got to get around on this guy and I was a pull hitter I always hit to left field I always pull the ball I was right handed I always hit it to left field 3-2 count I got the bat around and I saw it hit that end of the bat just enough just the right timing I hit the ball Run! I take off. And the guy at first base says, slow down. It just went over the right field fence. Do what? He said, take your jog. And I'm jogging bases. And we won that game. That was the only home run I ever hit to right field. It was the only home run that ever went over the right field wall. But it was because I heard that voice. I heard that voice in the stands. It gave me confidence to give it one more try, to give it one more shot, to take a swing again. Can I tell you our Heavenly Father's in the stands today? He's looking down on all of us and He's saying, you can do this. You can do this. Take another swing at it. Give your heart, soul, mind, and strength to it. He gave us the pattern. He gave us the tools. He said, Richard, you got my name. You got my blood. You got my word. You got my spirit. And he said, I will speak to you the secrets of the kingdom. He will never leave us. We can become distant, apathetic, lack concern unconcerned, lukewarmness. And even in a backslidden condition, the voice of God can speak to somebody and they can come to themselves. I've seen some very godly people stop praying and then they made wrong decisions. They made some poor choices. I speak from experience. And backsliding can come and will exist if you're not prayerful. You better be careful who you listen to. Prayerlessness and not listening to the voice of God, it, not listening to wise counsel from leaders, not listening to leaders is a recipe for disaster. You can quickly find yourself in a pit from which you were dug or in a worse situation. But what I love about my God is He will speak to you even when you're away from the Father's house. Can I tell you, God will never lead us where His grace cannot provide for us. His power cannot protect us and His Spirit cannot heal us. And all it takes is to hear that one word. To hear that one word from heaven and to hear His voice.
My God. 1 Corinthians 14 and 10. There are, as it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without significance. Signification. Can I target one voice today? That voice is the voice of your past and past failures. It is perfectly fine to have a testimony. But don't live in the past and live in past failures. You can't live in condemnation and all the what ifs. What if I had done this? What if I hadn't done that? Maybe I shouldn't have broken off this relationship. Maybe I should have never started this relationship. You've got to be careful and not allow the voice of your past to hinder your future. And you need to be careful who you let speak into your life. Use wisdom, discernment, if you hear wisdom and discernment if you hear a prophetic word. How many of you have prophecy over your life? If you even take advice from someone, do it with a multitude of counselors. I want words of advice and prophetic words to come from prayerful brothers and sisters. Right? If I want to know something about this tooth, I'm going to ask my son. He's pretty wise with that stuff. He's smart. He knows about it. So I had this thing come up in my mouth. Two, two oral surgeries later, still not repaired. This, this cyst causing me tremendous pain. And God says, you idiot. Your son's a dentist. Why don't you ask him? Hey, Blake. Look at this. Need a root canal. Nerve's dead. What? Yeah. Apostolic Conference last year. I walked out of here right after the end of the service. Went over here and got a root canal. It was done in like 20 minutes. Sent me to a guy. No more pain. I suffered with it for two years. All I needed was a word from somebody who knew what they were talking about. Whew. I felt stupid, Brother Thomas. I'm talking, you know how much oral surgery costs, by the way, if you don't have dental insurance? So I paid for two of those. Five minutes, he goes, all right, this is root, you know, root's dead, you need a root canal, go get it done. Wow. And what does God tell us through people that have wise counsel and prayerful lives? I pray that people like Sister Barbara Parker will go through our children and young people and put a mantle of prayer on them. Sister Sheila. People like Sister Sheila that are prayerful. Can I tell you now's not the time to be lukewarm? Skipping church? Skipping prayer time? Not going to Bible studies? Nothing wrong with vacation? I want to take one. I texted somebody yesterday. I said, hey, you didn't invite me. They were in the mountains somewhere. It looked so beautiful. But you can't be on permanent vacation. Permanent vacation will take you on a vacation from reality. God is speaking if we will pray and listen. So the prophetic time clock turns and those that are, have daily communion and fellowship with God will hear from God. Anybody pray and even come quickly, Lord Jesus? Anybody praying for the rapture? Just take us out of here. If you, every now and then I'm just walking along and say, just take us out of here, God. I'm really sick of this. I'm tired of this kind of stuff. I'm tired, I'm tired of, you ever said I'm tired of people's attitudes? You smile and you speak at the grocery store. Hey, how you doing? And they look at you like, I'm just trying to be nice in the line at the grocery store. Don't talk to me. Walked to this lady the other day, and we were standing there, and um, and she had a mask on, and I'm okay. Wear a mask, don't wear a mask. I'm I'm not into all that. I, I don't care what your preference. Hey, free country. Thank God we're free. And I just stepped up and I spoke to the cashier. How you doing, sir? Will you give me some space here? Sure. 
You didn't have to yell. All you had to do was ask me to give you, give you some space. I'm like, come, come on, Lord, check us out. Check us out. Do you know that the prayers of saints gone by and the voices of both past and present martyrs aligned with a praying and worshiping church that is on fire for God are going to force and bring the end of human history and bring about his kingdom. Revelation 8, 3 through 5. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. Look at this now. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with what? Prayers of the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God and out of the angel's hand. The angel took the censer, filled it with the fire of the altar, and what did he do? He cast it to the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Let you listen to what I just read. So the prayers of all the saints mixed in with the incense of heaven, mixed with the fire by an angel in heaven, and cast down to the earth. And you thought that your prayers were insignificant and meaningless. Whew. Wow. God. Help us to realize we impact the world with our prayers. You change the very atmosphere where you sit with your prayers. <laughs> so, let's look at this closer. Your prayer is connected to a consummation of human history. God gave me this in prayer. This wasn't borrowed from a textbook. This is Brother Bo right here talking to you this morning. The utterly astonishing thing about these scriptures is that it, it portrays the prayers of the saints as an instrument of God that he uses to usher in the end of the world with great divine judgment. The prayers of the saints accumulating on the altar before the throne of God until the appointed time, they are taken up like fire from the altar and thrown down to earth to bring about the consummation of God's kingdom. So now you understand millions and millions of prayers over 2,000 years this church has been on the earth are coming up before God and crying out to Him at the altar of God. Brother Marshall, have you prayed a lot of prayers in your life? A lot of them. They will come up as a memorial before God and you, and you know what people are saying? Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Let the rapture take place. Even come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come on, check us out of here. And the worse it gets, and the worse it gets, the more those prayers are going to ascend up to heaven. And God will be moved by those prayers. You ever seen God heal somebody you prayed for? You ever seen God deliver somebody you prayed for? You ever seen that backslider come home? Those are simple prayers. God heal my back. God heal this hernia right here. I know God can do some things if you pray and believe it in faith. So here's a scripture telling me my prayers are going before the throne like fire in an angel's hand. And God is going to throw them back to this earth. So I'm leaving you with three things. God wants you to know not one of your prayers prayed in faith has been ignored. It is neither lost nor forgotten. Not one prayer has been ineffectual or pointless. I feel the Holy Ghost. Not one of your prayers has been ineffectual and pointless. They have all been gathering on the altar before the throne of God. Dear God. And the flame that has been growing brighter and brighter in heaven and more intense is right there in the presence of God. 
And my brothers and sisters, there will be a time that it will come. He will command that holy angel. You take that mighty censer. You fill it with fire from the altar where your prayers are burning before me and I will pour it out on the world and bring his great and holy purpose to completion. I'm speaking to you prophetically this morning. The consummation of human history is owed to the supplication and the prayers of the saints that cry out day and night. So why not pray good prayers? Why not pray prayers of restoration, prayers of healing, prayers of unity, prayers of love, prayers of victory and not defeat, prayers of encouragement? My God. My God. Not one God-exalting prayer has ever been in vain. What an astonishing tribute to the enormous historical importance of both past and present prayers and listening listening to the voice of God. I hope today, I feel God, I hope today that you realize how important you are to God. You have value and worth to the kingdom beyond what you can comprehend today. In those times when you're just sitting out in the woods or you're sitting alone at home or you're riding down the road in your car and you're talking to him like I'm talking to you right now, have such a weight and an impact. And this group of people right here, there's enough people in there right here to start a revival and a harvest like we have never seen before. I am praying for every prodigal, every backslider to come home. Make a decision who you're going to serve today. As for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. Let's all stand. Let's thank the Lord for his word today. Master, I thank you for this word today. I thank you for prayers that never die. Huh. God, we know the end time is here. We know that you're going to call us home soon. Help us to communicate with you daily. Help us to walk with you daily. The effectual fervent prayer shall avail in this church. In Jesus' name, Lord bless you. Thank you for your attentiveness today. Praise God. Sit here at your feet.